He's a co-founder and CEO at Li2 and Brahma3. And Li2 is a venture committed to empowering education through experiential learning solutions for schools and colleges, which makes him the perfect person to host this workshop. Uh, the main topic for today's session is understanding what actually makes an entrepreneur, something which all of us as college students, it's like a very interesting topic, I think. So um, over to you, sir. Thank you so much, Mani uh, and Sahan. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Arvind, and uh, I hope that uh, you know we'll have a good three days of uh, quality session um, starting now. And uh, uh, yes, we have a close to about uh, twenty odd participants uh, today, which is which is good. And I hope to see uh, more of you uh, joining here. Uh, so before we even get started, right, I'll just give you a precursor to what I foresee from this uh, particular session uh, over the next two days. Uh, one, uh, it is the idea of entrepreneurship, right? Especially as, as students, uh, we, uh, you know, tend to uh, have fancy ideas about entrepreneurship and, you know, it's, it's the billion dollar venture and, you know, changing the world and all of that. Yes, that, that passion, that energy and uh, that motivation is uh, really required. But what really makes or breaks a company in the end of the day, when you talk of entrepreneurship or business, uh, there are certain elements which are uh, very critical uh, for um, success of, of any venture. Right. So those are the elements that I want to touch upon. Right. Uh, I we did this similar session uh, a couple of weeks ago, and uh, I'm not sure if we have uh, some of the participants rejoining this time. But uh, if you do, uh, then uh, very good. Um, if not, all of you who have joined for the first time, the idea of uh, this session is, uh, you know, to to make you understand the importance of a time and commitment to a certain uh, you know uh, vision or uh, clarity of thought that you have and how do you uh, make make that into reality right so entrepreneurship is always about that particular process of uh, bringing ideas to life and uh, making things happen in the real world and uh, more importantly uh, entrepreneurship also is about providing solutions or what we call as uh, you know problem solving right in the end of the day anything exists in the outside world as a as a tool for making lives better for people right in the end of the day that is what uh, everything is about right it, it need not just necessarily be entrepreneurship everything that we all do uh, on a daily basis is to make our lives or activities or uh, something better. So entrepreneurship is a larger, uh, what you call as a combination of these things where you have a particular problem you pick up and then you try to solve it in a particular way, right? So that's broadly what how I see entrepreneurship as. And uh, to begin with, uh, I don't want to make this session uh, you know, a one way traffic where I keep talking about, uh, you know, concepts and theories and then you people doze off. It's, it's not that way. Uh, entrepreneurship never works that way. And uh, it is, it's, it's a very dynamic uh, process, right? And I would want to keep this session uh, in tune with that particular uh, ethos of, uh, you know, keeping it uh, democratic, keeping it open and, uh, you know, something that adds value to you. So for me, even this small session, I would consider this as a problem solving initiative where uh, you all of you have uh, invested time and uh, you know uh, made yourself available uh, to gain something right so what that is and how we can proceed uh, will set the tune for the next two days obviously we have a planned structure uh, the structure would revolve around um, what makes an entrepreneur or what are those elements that are very critical uh, to uh, initiate the process of setting up a business and uh, taking it forward. That is obviously uh, the core element of the session. Apart from that, we also have certain tools that we want to explore. Uh, when I say tools, uh, these are just a set of thumb rules that uh, most businesses would tend to follow 
to get some clarity of uh, direction and vision and outcomes uh, in the projects and the uh, businesses that they want to do. And that's what we broadly classify it as business model canvas. Essentially, these are a set of pointers that would help any entrepreneur explore, uh, you know, uh, and be able to execute in a more clear manner. So the next three days is going to kind of, uh, you know, move between the two elements. One is what makes an individual or a group of people entrepreneurial and how they can, uh, you know, make an impact. That is one and what is necessary for that and how to build oneself towards that. And the second thing, as I mentioned, is the business model generation, how we go about uh, creating a business model. What I mean by model is a process, right? Something like a template which would enable uh, the, the core team of the business to take it uh, forward, right? So with this context, uh, I think uh, there was a small little introduction that um, money uh, was able to provide. Um, I will talk about uh, some of the things that I have been doing over the last uh, decade or so in the field of entrepreneurship as we as we speak uh, and uh, also maybe take out some tidbits of my college days and uh, you know how we started a business and how it did well and how it how it failed and how it succeeded all of these things will uh, be part of the session obviously to make it interactive so to to begin um, first and foremost i'd like people to be forthcoming and uh, especially today because tomorrow and day after is going to be uh, you know more structured but today i would like to very quickly uh, run through a few of the participants here uh, maybe if you could speak up that would be great uh, if you are not able to uh, you know speak uh, in case uh, you know because of uh, your connectivity issue or anything please use the chat window to to send out messages so that you know, I can set the context for the session. Essentially, or uh, what I would like to start with is uh, if uh, each one of you could kind of highlight what do you foresee in the next uh, couple of days as a takeaway, right? Uh, that would be a very good starting point. What are the couple of things that you definitely want to understand and do? One. The second thing is, if there are already, I'm hoping that there are uh, already entrepreneurs or somebody who has taken the dive, not just doing a project or not just uh, trying to, uh, you know, do some hack and, uh, you know, uh, small things uh, in terms of exploring, but have taken the dive into setting up their own company or uh, forming a small entity to, to actually go out to the market and uh, provide solutions, be it to sell a product or to present a solution to somebody you might or might not have generated revenue i'm not really bothered about that at this point but yes that's very important you will have to do it at some stage uh, because entrepreneurship is about is about generating cash flows and generating revenue in return to value proposition that you give back to the customers and the end users right so uh, i'd like to open the floor for about five to six minutes uh, if somebody could speak up on what they look forward to in this session first, right? Uh, that could be good enough. And then the introductions from you and what you are specifically doing uh, is uh, not something that I'm looking for at this point. That will be more tomorrow and day after where you start building your canvas. Uh, we can talk about that. Uh, because of uh, keeping uh, the time in mind, I would like you people to just first focus on what do you want to take away from this next three days? You know, what are those burning questions that you want answered? We can start with that, right? So please, uh, anybody could just, uh, you know, speak up uh, and um, just start off. As I mentioned, it's an open session. It's a free session and uh, Sahan knows and uh, some of you might already know. I don't want to make it like, you know, it's, it's not a classroom. Uh, it's not a college scenario and it, it's real world entrepreneurship it's your business it's your idea and you want to make it happen so use this platform as an opportunity to get started that's all i would like to say great so back to you guys uh, all of you uh, anybody can start speaking up um, put in a couple of words so that i can take notes and try to bring those points in right thank you hello sir i'm Meeta. 
And um, what, what really stood out to me when I wanted to join this workshop was that we all have a lot of ideas, but when we have to actually get our product or service out into the market as entrepreneurs, we have to streamline it, we have to know our market. And there's a lot of other work that has to be done, which we don't really learn in our academic um, calendar in college. So that is something that I was really looking forward to learn here, whether it's a business model canvas or what, how we can build ourselves up to be successful entrepreneurs. Wonderful, great. That's a, that's precisely what the session is about. Um, and thanks for uh, you know putting the question out. Definitely, yes. Um, how do we go out to the market? How do we bring uh, meaning to our ideas in a way that is acceptable? And uh, how do we go about it? What are the tools for it? Yes, the, the session is exactly about that. We will do that, uh, Meda. Thank you. Hello, sir. Sir? Yes, yes, keep I speaking. Want, yes. Sir, I want to know what all skills are required in a person to be an entrepreneur. Yes, perfect. It's not necessarily skill. Skill is a very uh, subset, small subset of a company. Uh, it's essentially the what we call as the attitude towards entrepreneurship and clarity of outcomes uh, that you are looking uh, to create is more important. So I am definitely going to talk about that in the next maybe five minutes. We're going to do that round. Thank you. So we have a message from uh, Kushal who sent in saying uh, developing a structured plan on developing the product and creating a revenue model. Wonderful. Okay, we will do that. Uh, we will try and understand what what you mean by a product and um, what do you mean by a revenue model, right? So we will definitely talk about that. Great. So we have uh, uh, good good focused questions coming in. That's that. I'm very happy to uh, see that. Great. Anybody else? Please speak up. We have uh, we have close to uh, uh, two dozen people in the in, on the forum right now today, and uh, you must definitely definitely uh, speak up because this is an opportunity for you to 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 be uh, you know to, to benefit. In the end of the day, you know I want you people to uh, get value out of the time that you are investing here. It should not be something that you get a certificate at the end of the program. It's not necessarily that, at least uh, for this particular workshop, at least yeah. Hello, sir. I'm Anusha. Uh, so, sir, if you have an idea and you know that it'll hit off well in the market, but then the skills required for that are something you don't have right now. So, in mm -hmm. that case, what are you supposed to do? Great. So, we have something uh, which is very important. Um, uh, who, who spoke just now? Anusha uh, is the one who spoke. Yes. yes. Sir. So, yes. we have um, something very, very critical to. Uh, you know, in a company uh, that's called the team, right? So, an entrepreneur need not necessarily have all the skills, right? So, I, I will directly go into the answer for that because that's a very, very powerful question. Uh, we have an idea, right? And then you also mentioned that the idea you know is is something that can make an impact in the market. So, it's a big statement that you're making. Because idea without that validation is meaningless, first and foremost. So first and foremost, you need to go and validate whether the idea that you have is really that powerful to, to make an impact or to go to the market, one. And to make that happen, what is needed uh, is the uh, what we call in the business model canvas as key resources, right? We will come to that uh, in a more detailed manner tomorrow. Uh, key resources, um, will definitely start with the team, right? Uh, so what I mean by team is if your solution is of a particular domain, then you need some subject matter expert in that domain. If it is coding, if it is development, if it is uh, marketing, everything uh, has to be done by different set of people. And how you bring these people together, uh, flock the herd together and take them in one direction 
is entrepreneurship, right? So a wonderful question, and I will try and add value there uh, wherever uh, possible. Thank you. Uh, there is Bharat. I have an idea, but I don't know how to implement in real time. Wonderful. Everybody gets idea, right? So a cup of uh, uh, coffee gives you an idea and a glass of beer will give you an idea. So uh, ideas are always there. Uh, it's about how we take it forward. Uh, so yes, idea, 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 right? So we have to move definitely ahead of that. Uh, otherwise, things are not going to move. In the last session, incidentally, there was somebody who had an idea and uh, uh, he didn't want to share it. So uh, so it just, just ended there. I just couldn't proceed with the conversation there. So an idea doesn't necessarily mean much until unless uh, it can be implemented. Finding the way to implement it in a meaningful manner is entrepreneurship, right? So uh, I always take some examples like Elon Musk. One morning he just got up and he said, I'm going to land a rocket, right? Everybody talks about taking off a rocket, right, into space, but he just said that I'm going to take the rocket to space and bring it back and land it. That was a great idea. At the same time, if uh, we were at a bar or if we were all sitting together and having fun and somebody had said that, there is a very high probability that, uh, you know, if there were 10 of them, uh, nine of them would have just laughed at you, right? So ideas can be powerful, uh, if implemented rightly, if not, um, they could just be a laugh, laughing stock, right? So, how to do that is the session about Bharat. Yes, uh, Bharat pointed out in the in the chat directly, so I'll just mention that. Great. Anybody else, please? Sir, what is the difference between doing business and doing a startup? It means entrepreneurship and versus business. Okay. Sir, is, are they different or? means more or less same. Yeah, they, they, they are different. Entrepreneurship is a French word for doing business. That's all. There's no other difference. <laughs> it's fancy, right? To say I'm doing business, then to say I'm an entrepreneur, right? So it's that's all. That's simple. Sorry to to you know put most of you down here. Entrepreneurship is just the word. It's a fancy word and uh, people have used it and abused it and that's all it is. There is nothing more to it. You can go back and say you're a businessman, you are a businesswoman, you can go back and say you're an entrepreneur uh, or whatever you want to call yourself, doesn't matter. Doing business is, uh, in very simple terms, adding value uh, and getting returns out of that, right? Somebody is willing to pay currency for the value they are getting, right? So that's business and that's entrepreneurship. Anything else, please? Good question, though. Yes, I'll take two more questions, uh, and you can continue to type in uh, in the chat forum anytime. But uh, two more questions, if possible, and then uh, we will move. Sir, one more question. Sir, currently I am in first year, so what's the right time to start? OK. <laughs> Have you heard of uh, you know the world's youngest entrepreneur? Right, there are some people who get these awards and they become famous, saying you know they are the world's youngest entrepreneur, youngest CEO from your college and school, right? So that's the right age. Whenever you are ready, you might be sixteen, you might be fifteen, you might be eighty-five. Uh, doesn't matter. There's no, there's nothing, there's nothing uh, for that. The time is right. You're ready, your team is ready, go for it. There is no age, obviously. Yes, one more question. So I wanted to, uh, am I audible? Yes. Yeah, so I wanted, I'm Shafali. I just want to know, like, usually when you're building a team, you need a team, uh, like, if you want to start something, you have an idea in mind, you need a team, because without a team, there's no success in your entrepreneurship journey. So how do you build a team where you trust those people? Uh, because you can't tell your idea out to everyone and anyone, right? So how do you build a team, team with trustworthy people? And how well, do you choose those people? It's the other way around, actually. They have to trust you to believe in your idea and work with you, right? So it's always the other way around. 
it's not not this way right you if you are what, well, let me let me i think let me break this down shafali i think I'll, I'll start from that i think that that was a very good question i'll start my session with this very particular uh, thing right uh, so uh, let's get started then right just give me a second and just share my screen yeah let's share something else can you see my screen? Yes, it's visible. Is it visible now also? Yep, yep, it's visible. Great. Okay, so let me get started. So I just want to call this entrepreneurship for everyone, or uh, just just a fancy word. Yeah? So keep the chat window open. Sorry, just give me a second, and we're getting started. Oh, so uh, there is a question by Bharat, but I'll go, go to that uh, interest, interested in creating a new idea. Anyway, I'll, I'll go to that later. So Shafali, uh, you were talking about how to build a team, uh, how to trust people with your idea and uh, things, right? So let me go directly to that particular slide. Right? So in fact, um, I knew that this is going to go there. So I started my uh, PPT with idea. So what do you mean by an idea? Right. So broadly, let's just understand this very, very clearly, because a lot of times um, people give too much value to the idea and not uh, not anything else. Right. Um, so we need to be very, very careful about this thought process. Ideas are dime a dozen. That is, you know, um, you you pay a dime and you get a dozen ideas. Right. And ideas come free. Right. Nobody unsolicited you just sit somewhere and people say hey, why don't you do that people have a lot of advice for the prime minister people have advice for the president of the united states also they have advice for china everybody they have ideas right so it's not necessary that it means anything and the second one what shefali was pointing out at is i have an idea but i won't tell you right this is something that is a very common uh, issue that we face amongst people which is fair I'm not saying that you need to go out and go about what you want to do or what it is, but uh, you don't get paid for having an idea. You get paid for making them happen. Please remember, right? So you might have an idea, you can make it happen. So let's take, let's take an example. I want to drill this down very clearly to you people that uh, you, you've heard of, I'm sure you've heard of KFC and you've heard of Coca-Cola and all of these companies, right? The idea of KFC is to give you cooked, or, or, you know, fried chicken, right? That's the idea. So I've given you the idea. Now it's a multi-billion dollar idea. What do you do about it? I have shared your, my idea to you. So what? Doesn't mean anything, right? Coca-Cola is just bottling carbonated uh, water and selling it to people. That's the idea, right? With a great taste and uh, with great packaging and all of that. That's the idea. What do you do about it? Both of these companies uh, uh, are not so KFC, but obviously Coca-Cola is a, is a huge, huge brand, probably one of the largest top five brands in the world, right? So, so what is the idea there? The idea is nothing. Right. I want to start a restaurant. I want to do this. Maybe it might be even more specific, right? I want to do uh, image processing for uh, mask detection you know, among the COVID, uh, you know, hotspot areas and uh, put fine on those people or right, from the police or whatever. This is a great idea. So what? Doesn't mean anything to me until unless that idea time is right and you are able to go and execute it, right? So as long as you're not able to create a roadmap on how you're going to execute it and get people convinced to work in that direction, nothing moves. So if you have an idea, you should share it with people without fear. But if you have a solution, right, there are very clear difference. Please understand. You have an idea, you have a solution. If you have a solution on how to implement that idea and how to solve that problem, that is what we call as IP, right? Intellectual property, the solution, the way you should do it and how you will do it and what will happen when you do it this way, what is needed to make it happen. That is value, right? To share that, you need to 
figure out whom to share with and what team to build and how to go about it. But the idea should be just thrown around everywhere to get people attracted to, to that particular thought process and then you can proceed forward. I hope I've answered that question. Uh, you can trust. Uh, and when the, when the question of trust comes, first and foremost, right? if you have an idea and you don't want to share because you're scared that somebody will copy, that means you have to do your homework better because uh, if you have had an idea now, I can pretty much assure you that at least there will be two or three companies in your country and uh, at least 20 to 30 companies across the world who have started it at least 18 months to 24 months at least or there might be somebody who's done it five years before also okay so i'm pretty much confident that this can happen right so so don't worry about it don't worry about sharing your ideas first and foremost and i've gave you the reason also right so let's go ahead uh, Instant creating idea and enhance the existing idea. So instead of, uh, Bharat says, instead of creating an idea, can we enhance the existing idea, which add more value to the product? Will it work in that way because already big players existing in the market? Yes, Bharat. So this is, this is, this is, I, I'm liking this cohort. Like the people are asking really powerful questions here because this is right. Always remember, there are notions about entrepreneurship. Notions about entrepreneurship are that it has to be novelty. It has to be something new. Nobody should have done it better. Is it, you tell me, uh, if you're going uh, on a road and uh, would you prefer to go where the board says you're going to go to New York or you're going to go to Bangalore or something like that, or you just go on a road hoping that you'll go to Bangalore, which is better for you? Which one is better? Hello? Did you understand my question? Yeah. Reach the destination safely. Exactly, right? So I would very blindly want to do something which is already being done in a better way. And that I think he's got it right, you know, add value to an existing idea. Yes. So have you heard of this company called Google? Yes. Was Google the first search engine in the world? No. Was Facebook the first social networking platform in the world? No. Was Apple the first computer company in the world? Or uh, Microsoft for that instance? No. They were the ones who got it and they became visible to you. There were many more that came. Xerox was probably one of the first companies who were working on a personal computer, actually. You know, Xerox was a very innovative company in those days, and uh, but nobody knows it, right? And IBM, uh, one of the largest companies in the world, uh, was not necessarily the first company to build wire or mainframes or, uh, or uh, business machines, right? There were so many more. Everything, everybody, Coca-Cola or any company you take, they if they're existing today, they are not the first company to do it. More, most likely, a company which starts something so new is bound to fail. Is bound to fail or is bound to be number two or number three or number five also because people can see the struggle. So you are actually digging the road for somebody else so that they can bulldoze and go, right? So which, which doesn't mean, I'm not again saying that you should not do something completely novelty or, or because there are no rules per se. As long as you know how fast you can go, yes. But the better way of doing it, for sure, is what Bharat is talking about. There's an existing concept, there's an existing direction, there's an existing thought flow uh, that you can see as an example. More importantly, there is an existing problem. And uh, somebody is trying to do put an effort in that direction. And yes, you can go. For instance, now Tesla, right? Tesla is one of the largest car makers in the world. Now they have done a brilliant job uh, in terms of electric cars and they're one of the leaders. But in the 10 years down the line, 15 years down the line, they might not necessarily have the biggest market share. Now they do have the biggest market share in uh, electric cars and therefore he's the richest man in the world. But then you have Mercedes Benz catching up, you have Audi catching up, you have Toyotas catching up, everybody catching up. And these people are big daddies of this industry and they know what to do. 
So they are going to bulldoze everybody and then eventually 20 years down the line, we don't know who is going to be the leader, right? So, so that's not how it works. How it works is very, very simple. Think in this terms. Is there somebody else in the market? If the answer is yes, what are they doing? And is it aligning to what I want to do? Or we as an organization, let us keep it as I right now. Forget about we. I, what is that what I want to do? Is the problem that I am trying to solve same as the problem that they are already solving? Next question you ask is, are they solving it in a great way? Or is there so many things more that can be done or so many things that can be done better? And can I do it myself or can I, do I have the necessary understanding of solving it better? If the answer is yes to all of this, then yes, you have to go out and do it. For instance, uh, during COVID times, uh, I partnered with a friend of mine and we started a, a COVID care company called Cleanser. And today, uh, Touchwood, we are doing fairly uh, okay and we are scaling quite rapidly. And uh, doesn't mean that people have not made sanitizers. It doesn't mean people have not manufactured uh, automatic dispensers. Uh, it, doesn't make, it doesn't mean people have not done cleaning liquids and uh, you know disinfectant solutions no th these have been existing since since maybe 150 years right so that does that mean that you cannot enter the market no it doesn't mean anything it means that can we do it better can we brand it better can we position it better the answer was yes and we thought we'll do it as simple as that so yes how to compete with them yeah uh, if such bulldozers exist in the market how can a mere startup beat them see uh, who is this uh, anusha okay and then bharat then how to both of you are asking the same question here uh, bharat and anusha how to compete with them you are not please understand you are not competing with them right you are trying to solve a problem as simple as that the question is if they are also solving the same problem and they are able to reach out to more people let them do so what people you can reach out to is what you can do right now right but your customer is not their customer as simple as that so you have at least taken away one customer from them tomorrow you will take two customers from them then three are at some stage you know something that they are not doing right and you can do it and then you will immediately suddenly get ten thousand customers and fifty thousand customers and what do you mean by bulldoze right uh, in business and entrepreneurship if you're getting bulldozed by somebody there are two ways, right? If, um, for instance, let me take a company like, like uh, you know, uh, say I am doing something in AI, okay? And uh, you have an idea in AI, you built a small product and it's doing well. But in AI, you have Google also, you have Amazon also, you have uh, 100 more companies. How will they bulldoze you? The first thing they will do is, if you're doing something better than what they're doing, first and foremost, you have to understand that you're solving, please write it down. You are solving a problem and you're not competing. But you don't get into business saying that I want to be bigger than Hindustan Unilever or I want to be bigger than Google. It doesn't work like that. Google is a search engine and Google is an ads company. They're able to generate revenue. But I think I have this particular way of doing it better than Google. Maybe it's only focused to Bangalore, or maybe it's only focused to uh, a certain type of, for doctors, right? Google for doctors, maybe, I don't know. Very specific solution you have. The way you will get bulldozed is that you will get a call from Google and they'll say, I'm going to give you $50 million, will you join my team? So do you want to get bulldozed like that or not? It's the first question you need to answer. Then. The other way you'll get bulldozed is that your solution is not good enough and uh, Google or whoever can make the solution better than yours, then you are just missing out on the opportunity because you're not as fast enough. That is, uh, that's an that's, uh, open field and they're not doing anything wrong. So I, I'm going to restrict myself at that point. If they're going to find uh, rules, bend the rules, that is secondary. Don't worry about it at this point. If you even get noticed by anybody who is your competition, you're doing really great. Please remember.
if your computation doesn't even know that you exist, that means you have not done anything and you have long way to go, no fear, right? There are 7 billion people. Nobody can cater to 7 billion people at one shot, correct? So even if you get 700 people paying 1,000 rupees each, isn't that good revenue? Then you get 70,000 people and paying 1,000 rupees each, isn't that good revenue? You are still talking 70,000. Then you go to 7 lakh and then you go to 7 million, then you go to 700 million, then you go to 7 billion, right? So <laughs> that's way far away. So don't worry. Don't even think that way. I don't think it's meaningful to even think that it's a waste of time. Just keep your focus on what is it that you are trying to solve and go for it. Right? So bulldozer question is answered, I hope. Um, and now let's move on. So what is entrepreneurship? I think we, we already touched upon this very quickly. Oh, and I said, entrepreneurship is the activity of setting up a business or businesses, taking financial risk in the hope of profit, right? So this is a very, very uh, rudimentary, uh, what you say, boring definition of entrepreneurship. And that is what it is in the end of the day. You, you, because you, you are asking me the same question here. How do we compete? Uh, if they're going to bulldoze us, what to do? What, what does it mean that you've taken risk? You've put in financial risk. Financial risk also means time. Please remember, because time is money, right? In the end of the day, that's the biggest financial risk you take. If you invest 10 years of your time not doing anything, then you are set back by 20 years in your career, right? So that's a financial risk. Uh, don't think that it is uh, not. You know, I've just put my time and it's okay. I've not put money. It doesn't work that way. If you put time, that means you put 10 times right? Because you would earn otherwise somewhere else. So in the hope of profit and that hope should become clarity. And that is what entrepreneurship is about. So here there's another little better definition. Entrepreneurship is the process of designing, launching and running a new business, which is often initially a small business. The people who create these businesses are called entrepreneurs. That's all. And somebody asked me that question. I have the answer for that also. Entrepreneur is a French word for one who has ideas and does them, right? As simple as that. That is somebody who can do business is an entrepreneur. That's all. But then I would like to coin another word, or not coin, I mean, like introduce you to another word, very important. It will set the context for today's session is the word enterprising. They're not from the same root word. They're two different words, but they sound similar. Enterprising means having or showing the initiative and resourcefulness, right? What it means is people want to be with enterprising people because they can get something out of them, some value out of them, right? And that's exactly what a business is about, right? If you set up something, you need to be enterprising. That is, I go out and say, here's a pen and uh, you, I put up a small little pen uh, if I take, if I take, if I have a nice little pen, it's a simple pen, right? Pen that writes, right? And I go and stand in front of a bar or a, or a pub and then say, you know, do you want to buy a pen? Do you want to buy a pen? People are not going to buy it because it's not resourceful for them. But if I do the same thing in front of an examination hall, right? With a high chance that people out of panic will say, oh, I have one pen, but, you know, maybe it'll stop writing. Maybe I'll buy one more, right? And the chances are 50% of them will simply buy because you go and say that this pen will definitely write. Or you just put a board saying good luck pen, right? And then put a small little girl standing in front of the examination hall with a rose in her hand saying, you know, good luck pen uh, for your exam. I am pretty sure. How many of you will buy this pen if you're getting into the class of, uh, you know, somebody says, you know, they put a photo of your favorite God or you, they put a photo of your, uh, I'm telling you all this because uh, there is a reason why I'm talking about this, uh, you know, put a photo of your favorite God or put a nice little quotation which says that, you know, uh, this brings you good luck. Uh, uh, and then I say this pen is 10 rupees, but I, I, I say it's 50 rupees, right? Uh, how many of you will buy it? Most likely buy it. Right, so around 90% Priyanka is saying that is all. It's the same pen. Uh, you take it in front of a pub or a 
discotheque and try to sell it. And the second one in front of an examination hall with that beautiful packaging and messaging where you create value proposition, right? It's the same pen, remember. Uh, a pen is meaningless uh, for somebody who's going to party, right? Pen is valuable, the most valuable thing for somebody who's going to write an exam. And then the perception, there's fear, right? They're already entering the exam with fear. And anything that will put their fear down is much more valuable to them than the actual uh, work of that particular device. It's a, in, after all, it's the same pen that they have in their pockets, but they would want this pen because it's going to make them feel better, as simple as that. And people will pay more money for feeling better than actually getting the job done. For instance, uh, I again always take these simple examples. An Android phone worth one tenth the money is probably way more useful and resourceful than an Apple iPhone. But people having an iPhone have an iPhone. I, I have one, and a lot of lot of you, I'm sure, you have one. Uh, it's a great product. Right? I'm not saying it's not a great product, but it is not so great that there is no other phone equivalent to that, right? For that price point, you'll get five of those phones. But still people go because it makes them feel better, as simple as that. So the value proposition that you're giving them is that, right? One is it does the job, means it's enterprising, it's showing initiative, it's resourceful, everything. At the same time, it is also giving you a perception of satisfaction or you gratify the customer or the end user. Only then you can demand value, right? So business and entrepreneurship revolves around these two things. One, are you solving the problem? Two, is the problem or the solution, is the solution that you're offering also making the end user feel satisfied, feel better and uh, perceive is the word that this product is really enhancing their uh, whatever, you know, life or uh, their activity, right? So that's it. So entrepreneurship revolves around these two. What problem you're trying to solve and is the solution actually going to solve it? The second you think from the end user perspective, if I were to get that solution, would I be happier, way happier than taking a similar solution from somebody else? That happiness index is what we call as value perception, right? So there is value proposition and value perception. If you crack both of these, then you're a billion dollar company, right? That's all, that's a, it's a consequence. And when you talk of great successful companies, that's what they do. Right, be it Coca-Cola, Coca-Cola is just water and carbon dioxide and some some black color chemical in that. But Coca-Cola is Coca-Cola. The same cola is also available uh, uh, near the beaches and on the roads for two rupees, but Coca-Cola is still Coca-Cola, right? So similar with Tesla or with Apple, I can go on and go on and go on. The number one, Nike, right? So Nike does not necessarily make the best shoes in the world. But Nike is about you. You, you, if you, if you wear Nike, then you, you are a cult. You, you represent change and you represent action, right? So this is branding and positioning and all of that. It's a different workshop altogether. But I am just saying, uh, setting the context in for what do we mean by uh, entrepreneurship, right? So, is there any question? This will cause a chain reaction if sold before exam. Just by one person buying it, every peer pressure could play a role. Yes, obviously. So, Medha, you, you got my point, right? So, I just, I really made up this. I, I should probably try it also, you know. You know COVID-3 pen or something like that, maybe, right? So, <laughs> just just to make people safe to go and write exams, right? So, so this is what it is. And um, again, here you are in the borderline of perception versus uh, actual work being done, right? You can write it in, in many ways. Uh, so positioning, branding, um, messaging, packaging, everything matters. But what is more important is that, are you trying to solve a problem? And is that problem uh, worthwhile to chase? That's what you need to look for, right? So 
industrialist meaning um, google google it so uh, it's it's all i mean it doesn't matter yeah you're an industrialist businessman nonsense nonsense doesn't matter right in the end of the day as i said leave all that uh, you put whatever you want in your card doesn't matter as long as you're solving a problem and you're happy about it they're happy about it you're done right so so here it is So I have this, you know, let me erase these. So you have essentially a ladder of four things, right? Um, in business, you start either ways, idea, then I we spoke about the next thing, which is a logical thing, value. If idea is great, means that it is adding value, right? Otherwise, it's meaningless. If it is adding value, means the idea is not just an idea, but it is a solution, right? If idea and solution are there, then there must be a market. So you assume that first, right? That's what I think somebody else also asked that I have an idea and there is a big market. There is no guarantee about it, right? There is absolutely no guarantee about whether there's a big market or not. You need to go there and figure it out, right? So market is there. You always start with an assumption because there's something called as a gut feel or you've seen things around you. And then you have entrepreneurs, right? When I say entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs, uh, when you talk of lean management or lean startups, entrepreneur is not just you and me, but everybody everywhere is an entrepreneur because they want to get value and add value always it's an exchange so how that ecosystem you can build is the idea of uh, uh, you know context and definition of the whole process of entrepreneurship right so here it is so what do you mean by an idea right let me erase this for a second yeah so what do you mean by an idea is i Please don't ever say I have an idea, right? Uh, because uh, it's it's cliche. It's it's good, but then if you want to do a deck and if you're looking for an investment, you rather start with the problem to solve, right? This is the problem to solve. This is what we have identified, and we want to achieve this because this is the value that it will bring to so many people, right? So, idea, value, market. Idea, value, market is problem solution and who's benefiting are you clear so please revolve the business model canvas is this right idea value market right so uh, in the end of the day if these three things are there and if you are setting the context direction and the process for this then the entrepreneurship journey is complete right so is there a problem to solve or this is the problem i want to solve or i wish to solve and here is my solution these two sentences are way more powerful in messaging than to go out and say, I have an idea, right? So please remember, when I say idea, I mean the problem you're trying to solve. And then you also go out and talk about entrepreneurship, right? So clarity on what I want, right? So now is the workshop. Uh, on day one that we're talking today is revolving around this particular point clarity on what i want right i'm, I'm very being very specific about i and not we right because people go out and say generic things i want to eradicate poverty i want to change the world i want to remove democracy i want to bring that i want to bring this all of that is fine the question is why why do you want to do it? Why not somebody else? That is the first stepping stone for entrepreneurship, right? So how do you balance? See, um, Anvesha, you are asking, how do we balance problem solving with profiting? See, uh, you... This is a wrong question, I'm sorry to say, but it's a very incorrect question because if you are solving a problem, you're not solving the problem for free. There is value, 
and value can be two things right value can be money and profit or value can be self gratification for yourself right that's why i said clarity on what i want right so that answers your question if you want to do charity and because it's a huge problem you want to do charity you can go on and do that right so for example you want to donate blood now how much money will i get to donate blood is is not the right question right but if you want to start a blood bank and you go out and collect blood from 100 people and sell that blood to the uh, hospital uh, then it is a business it's profiting and also solving a problem right that choice you have to make right and both of them are very 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 profound and valuable in fact i would see a blood bank which is collecting money and charging money uh, to to give it to the hospital way more valuable than one person giving blood because it's more organized it's saving more lives at the same time it is sustainable because it's making profit so it's not the question of ethics and it's not the question of uh, you know cheating or whether it is right to make money out of uh, because vaccines also right the the company that makes vaccines in india that guy is a multi billionaire now you can't go and say uh, you know they're selling vaccine and making profit or people are dying it's not the statement you make right so don't demarcate between these two make a choice where you want to be you want to be on problem solving side only even if it means that you don't get money then you go to the charity side of things or or, or whatever right it's you're just doing it but you come with a risk of not being able to scale on the other side you can still solve problems by by charging people uh, so which is great it's not a problem not at all a issue right so how do we balance there is no balance there is, there is you should never try to balance you should do only what you want to do as simple as that and if that is to make money great if that is not to make money then that's the second thing right so yes any other question so what i want is something that we were looking at uh, and uh, here here it goes i don't know why this slide came i think this was asked in the previous session and incidentally the same question was asked by anmesha so we all know entrepreneur has to manage a lot of risk in his or her career and it would be great if uh, you know uh, they got or i just copy pasted somebody's question i'm sure it's a boy who's written it so but what if he ends up in a loss uh, there's a way he can fulfill his losses and stop him from getting bankrupt <laughs> uh, well uh, see that's the whole game right so that's the same question that uh, anvesha is also asking i think i answered this question uh, right now right so it's not about that it's about problem solving and before you do all of this and that's why this today's session i said you need to know very clearly what do you want right for that i usually kind of uh, give you uh, let me jump this for now yes what do i want out of it so there is this book i always uh, in my sessions introduce you to it's called uh, harvard business review on entrepreneurship it's a very uh, what you say very old uh, book of essays maybe about 30 40 years 30 years at least i think 20 30 years in that the first chapter is the question every entrepreneur must ask by amar bhide you can see that at the bottom of my uh, of the slide i'm going to share this uh, if there is going to be a whatsapp group or something that's created after this session i'm going to share this to you people uh, so that you can go so please look at this in depth and in detail uh, the first and foremost question that you need to ask is are my goals well defined right so this question is a burning question right because most of the time you you or me would want to start just because somebody else is doing it or because you or me think that it's fanciful to do it and that's not how it works are my goals well defined means only one thing right that you have clarity if you don't have clarity on what problem you want to solve and why right so if you if you notice 
my very first slide in this session today i jumped jumped it because i wanted to go to the idea part is why if you were not able to and this is my first slide of the workshop it says why right why do you want to be an entrepreneur i want to solve a particular problem the question is why you will say people are dying people are doing this people that is happening this is happening my question is why you right so until unless you are not clear and this is why you can be two answers right people will answer one on a you know this beauty pageants and all of that you know to miss worlds and will come on, will, will will be on the stage people will ask why are you doing this they'll say i want to change the world i want to do this i want to add value that's for the stage that's for the world to know some kind of a marketing story but inside they know that if they become miss world or whatever they can become the world's biggest actress and they can they can be supermodels they can be famous they can make money right so that could be the reason why they are on the stage but they will not go and tell that on the stage right they'll go and tell something else similarly when i ask you the question what or why you want to be an entrepreneur what is your personal aspiration please remember the question is personal aspiration i'm not asking what is your aspiration and what is personal aspiration is personal i don't want you to sit and write it here and tell me right i don't care nobody cares about it and you will not tell the truth anyway right because it's your personal aspiration so this is for you and therefore it is an entrepreneur's guide to big issues and what is the big issue can you somebody tell me what is the biggest issue for an entrepreneur Uh, somebody is talking by the time you answer that i'll just read this question how does actually funding companies work they become a partner or just bank who lends money without <laughs> which is that bank here arvind please connect me to somebody who gives money without collateral i'll take it and you know go to london or maybe somewhere and settle down nothing doing this is this is a very far away question let's not go into this right now funding and money comes later this is not relevant at this point we'll do it tomorrow sometime i'll remember it i'll i'll talk about it tomorrow yeah so my question to you is i forgot my question yeah uh personal aspirations right so what is the biggest entrepreneur's guide to big issues can somebody even guess what is the big issue for an entrepreneur fear of failure addicted to ideas and not open to better ones okay you you almost reached there kushal but there is something much bigger than that clarity and confident about the idea okay what is the big issue for an entrepreneur the clue is in the questions taking risk no just hold on i i have to take this call i think it's urgent think about it keep typing
Yes. What problem idea is solving? Having a clear path for implementing. Uh, will this idea work? Failure, planning. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. There is no set. No, 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 no. no. I, to know what, he, okay. Here, somebody, Chandan. Okay, Chandan. To know what they want. Okay. Okay, fine. That is the nearest I've got. The biggest issue for an entrepreneur is the entrepreneur himself or herself. As simple as that, right? If you are clear why you are doing it and what you want out of it, all of these problems will go away. You will not ask the question, should I solve the problem or should I make money, right? Because you already know what you want, right? So, and that, that won't be two things, right? You already know if you want to buy a Mercedes Benz or you want to go in a uh, rocket, that is your problem, right? So you will do things only to make that happen. Or on the other side, you you if you think that no 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 I want to I want to remove global warming and I want to do solar city, yes then you will go in that direction even if you don't get money or even if you don't because today Elon Musk is the richest man in the world but he got money by selling PayPal uh, he was the guy who built it or whatever and then he put all his money in building rockets and he became bankrupt. And he did not have a place to live and sleep. He used to be in the office. That's what he says. I don't know if it's true. So that's what they he wanted to do. Uh, it's not the money. Now money is a consequence. But you also need to be very clear about that. I, I'll keep sticking to this point only because that is the most important point. The biggest issue for an entrepreneur is the entrepreneur himself or herself. Until unless they are not clear what they want, then the personal aspirations will not be clear and only after you crack the personal aspiration part you can go to business sustainability business size and all of those things what i want to build because business sustainability and size is something very important if you want to make a billion dollars please remember that if you don't have already a hundred million dollars with you and you're just making it 10x if you have just one rupee you're growing your business a billion times over because a billion is thousand crores or whatever nonsense, a hundred crores or I don't know, so many times over, which means it will take you a good 20 to 30 years until or at least a good 10 to 15 years. And those 15 years, you will not get anything else. You will be only doing that. And most likely your children or your grandchildren will enjoy the fruits of revenue and value of what you have created. So you need to have something much bigger than that. The goal must be much bigger than just saying I'm going to sit and make money and blah, blah, blah. Okay. So that's something that you need to be very clear. It's about making money, then it's okay. I'm not saying it's wrong. You need to set your sustainability and size based on that. You can't go and try to get everything in one place. Yes. Then comes somebody mentioned risk. Yes. Tolerance for risk. Here, uh, people always... Uh, think that entrepreneur. How many of you think entrepreneurs are risk takers? Bharat says yes. Entrepreneurs are risk takers. How many of you think entrepreneurs are risk takers? Okay, Medha says yes. Okay. Is it really true? An entrepreneur who is not clear. A entrepreneur who is not clear takes risk, right? An entrepreneur always works with the principle that risk, right? So again, the question is risk to reward, right? Who is an entrepreneur? An entrepreneur or a business person is somebody who says, I will take less risk for more reward. Correct? Is it the other way? I will take more risk for less reward. Is it true? No. So an entrepreneur is somebody who takes a risk with the hope of reward, which is much larger. Okay. So lower the risk, greater the chances of success. And how do you lower the risk? Please remember, lowering the risk doesn't mean that not doesn't mean that you should not invest money. It doesn't mean that you should not invest time. None of these. Low risk means you should have 
clarity. Somebody said here, calculated risk takers. Yes. What do you mean by calculated? Calculated is uh, on the math side of things, but it's about clarity. If I do this, this is going to happen. That's the insight. And I am going to do it in this particular way. That is the method. And I'm going to do it tomorrow, not today. That's the strategy, right? And I'm going to do it with these three people. That's the capability, right? All of these things matter. Without that, taking a risk is like going and hitting your head to the wall, right? A lot of people think that, oh, I'm going to start tomorrow. I'm going to, because uh, somebody called Mark Zuckerberg left the college and started a company, doesn't mean you should do it, right? Please remember, he dropped out of where? Harvard, huh? yeah, he dropped out of Harvard not from uh, you know government college in uh, some place or uh, something else right so dropping out of harvard is something else so don't get carried away by these things or uh, if uh, steve jobs is a dropout uh, there were also in the same year there were 50 more dropouts from that college and nobody knows them and the next year also there were 100 more dropouts nobody knows them and so on and so forth just that one person came out doesn't mean you should take that risk until unless you're clear with insights and clarity. So nobody take risks without the hope of reward and the hope of reward should not be a gamble. There is a clear differentiator. Please remember that risk is not risk is not gamble. Okay, that's gambling. What you're saying is gambling, right? Oh, I'll do, I'll jump up, I'll start my business, I'll quit my college, I'll do everything today only, I'll become billionaire tomorrow is gambling. You might become, I don't know, but in gambling, please remember, uh, one out of nine chances or 10 chances is your chances of winning. Nine times out of 10, you lose, right? Or even more, right? Maybe 99 times out of 100, you lose. It's a lottery, right? Risk is not gamble, right? You take risks is is more calculated. You know that it is risky, but the outcome is better. You understood, dear yeah, people? So with this, these are the attitudes and these are the important elements of an entrepreneur. And if you are not sure or if you are not clear of this, please don't start. Right? So please don't start simply saying, you know, personal aspirations are very important. And personal aspirations, mind you, is not for your life, right? Again, again, because we, we tend to get philosophical about these things. I want to do an entrepreneur, be an entrepreneur, means that I can never work, I can never do this, nothing like that. Take your personal aspiration for the next six months. Does it make sense? For the next 18 months. I always say people take a window of thousand days that's close to about three years and divide it into two parts 18 months and 18 months kind of segment somewhere around that you will get and make a plan for that right because uh, then you will have some clarity then you will have a clear vision uh, plan for one day plan for a month plan for 10 days is good but those are smaller goals once you're clear of where you're heading but if you give yourself, I don't want to give one year because one year is always that, you know, resolution kind of a thing. Every January 1st, you have an idea and next January 1st, it just drops off. Take it, take it little more than a one year. Okay, take it about 400, 500 days and uh, do it two times over. That's the stretch you can see. I think everybody can see thousand days from here, right? Three years down the line, line what you could become or what you will become is a good good window to have where there is certain degree of predictability that you can make till then set your personal aspirations out of the window okay you say this is what i if i have achieved this much for myself in the next 18 months i'm good once you say this much then you focus on what is the business what is the opportunity what is the thing but set that aside because i don't want that to be a problem for you in the business because a lot of times that's what happens a lot of times uh, that is exactly what happens where now you're excited about I'm, I'm telling this for you college students because now you're excited because you don't have much of commitment you're still in college uh, 
and uh, you don't really have uh, any issue so you can start once you get into fourth year once you graduate with the covid times and some of your friends got a job some of your friends went to the us to do ms and whatever a couple of your friends got married and all of this happened and still you have done your startup and your pcb broke and uh, your code is not working you don't have customers and your parents are kicking you what will you do that time that much you visualize first at least at least that much so then you say okay i don't want to be in that situation at least i should have 50000 rupees with me as a backup savings i'm good or something say, i don't know 50000 5 lakhs 5 rupees that is left to you or you inform your peers and say that 18 months this is what i'll take a risk but after that if it fails i am going to take up a job or i am going to do this set that for yourself and evaluate that after 500 days and then take a call you understood so two two and a half three years you need to see yourself ahead and then uh, imagine the situation around you and uh, where you want to be yes you might be 3 years down the line you want to be with you want to go in a ferrari is fine or you want to uh, make a billion dollars is fine if you can do it great but if you cannot do it this is the lowest i'll get into that is the tolerance for risk what i mean by tolerance for risk is this is the cut off point i will not reach this cut off point personally i will not reach this cut off point for my business both of these you should evaluate once you evaluate both of these only then you will be able to move ahead is that clear so uh, i hope i am not uh, boring you guys uh, but this was important after this it becomes easy if you say and 1000 days works for me i am giving you 1000 days because it's a nice little window maybe for some of you it is it is 5 years some of you it is just 1 year that depends on you right there is no thumb rule 1000 days is a nice little Uh, funda that i have for myself i look at 1000 days from today and uh, what could be the situation family situation personal situation uh, investments all of that we think and then based on that we set the goal and then uh, move towards that in a streamlined manner and that's when you can work backwards do i have the right strategy clear definition and all of these things will come which will which is nothing but the business model canvas if you see this whole thing uh, is the business model was early stage it is a uh, written book but it's nothing but that okay so at this point i think it's 7:30 now at this point i would like to stop my monologue have a glass of water so i would want you people to digest what i just told and if you have any questions please do ask after this we will jump into a more structured manner of business model canvas so today's entrepreneur question is what is your personal aspiration the biggest issue for an entrepreneur is the entrepreneur themselves so they need to be clear and uh, the takeaway is uh, if you can define your personal aspirations in parts and not because i knew most of you would have thought personal aspiration means oh where i want to be in 10 years 15 years all of those with corona you don't even know for 30 days so don't go there those things are uh, not so easy to predict nobody would have even bill gates wouldn't have thought that he would be the richest man in the world for 20 years nobody would have thought that so don't plan such stupid things you can plan for a thousand days i would say right so that's the personal aspiration for me not more than that okay with that now tell me what all you want to do and let's get down to reality now you are in college right now you have a project to finish you have a think you better go hard to do so you have some ideas and now you want to figure out whether to start a company with that or whether to just proceed further should we do design thinking what i should do that is what it is so now from now on the next two days is going to be about that okay so all this uh, gyan and all the uh, gas that i gave you right now is is worth whatever i gave it you can take it or leave it but uh, it's important okay with that i think uh, 7:30 i would like to leave the floor open for you people to digest what i said and then uh, uh, scold me or you know uh, you know tell me i wasted your time whatever so that you know i can proceed further thanks for question and clarifications and 
whatever right feedback people are not in japan or something right or like not slept off it's still 7:30 hello yes sir slept huh? no sir <laughs> Okay, so go ahead, please. I mean, like, was it meaningful? First of all, please. I I always take this. It was, sir. Yes, sir. It was really meaningful for us. Yes, sir. Okay, great. Thank you. So let's be honest, sir, because I don't want to waste your time. Let me be very clear. But this for me has helped a lot because I started up when I was twenty. Twenty. What third year? Third year is about. If you have not failed at all, then third year is about twenty year. Twenty year. Right? Yeah. So yeah, around 2021, I started my first company when I was in college, and um, I ran it till I was 23, 24, right? And uh, it did well, and then it boomed, and then I, I took up a job, and then I went to the US. In 2008, until 2008, I worked there. Then I again wanted to start up, and then I came back in 2008 and started LI2. 2013, I started Drama3. And uh, 2020, I started Cleanser. So now, Touchwood, all three are there. So that's my story. So I don't know what's your story. So at, when I started POSI, when I was in college, I had wonderful ideas and I did did fairly okay. I mean, it's not like we didn't do anything. We, we had about 26 people working with us. We made some money. We lost some money. One of the partners left and then I left and then things went haywire. All of this will happen. So uh, it's not something that, uh, uh, you know, so all those learnings is what I want to say, because I never thought of thousand days that time. Uh, I thought about like now, 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 but then the pressures kept in, you know, when I was 22, 23, it started because <clears throat> it was quite late. And by then we started making losses uh, and all of things happened. So all of that, I'm just more warning you that you need to think through at least to that age. Now I'm I'm hope I'm thinking that you people are 2021, 20, right? So you have another three years from now, 23, 24, 25. So by the time you're 24, 25, what is the situation you would be in? And what would be your peer pressure situation? What would be your thing that you should plan for, right? And then work backwards. Set that as your tolerance risk. I will not go below that. And then above that, obviously there's no restriction. You can be a billionaire when you're 25. I'm not saying don't be that, but you don't plan for that. You plan for the thing you say that this is the cutoff. I need to be above this. So how can I aim above that? That's important. So you don't fall. The tolerance for risk is cushion, right? So with that, uh, any questions or anything, please go ahead and ask me. Uh, thank you, sir. I think I personally uh, I've gained a lot of clarity when it comes to how I approach an idea itself. There are things like personal aspirations or the amount of risk I'm willing to take or how I will get about executing my strategy. I hadn't really considered all of that from a long term perspective. So that is something that uh, I think I've gained a lot from. And so my question would be, you mentioned that when we have an idea, we should consider two things uh, primarily how it solves the problem and whether the end user it changes how it can actually enhance their lives. So there are some products that it can really help, like even the pen, for example, like where we sell the pen has a lot of, um, it affects our sales or whatever. So how do we, and how do we define our target ma market clearly in the initial stages itself? Wonderful, well, it's a very, very powerful question. Very nice, huh? uh, thank you for framing it well. Uh, so yes uh, one is obviously the problem solving capability of your idea or a solution right so that's primary and then the next immediate question you ask is uh, whose problem is it anyway right so is it so once it's a very uh, it's a specific question it cannot be a generic answer right but how do you find the market is is something called as design thinking i don't know if uh, if you had a session on that you must have had i think right i mean yes or no was, did somebody handle design thinking for you or were you introduced to this concept of design thinking? Yes, okay, great, great. So in design thinking, we kind of go with this, right? Empathize, define, ideate, and then prototype. So essentially, we don't even go with an idea. 
right? So Medha, I think Medha asked a question. We don't even go with an idea. We go with an empathy, right? right? We go with the problem or we go with trying to listening to people's problems, right? So when you do that, and when you go there and there are certain steps to do that, right? Understanding the human needs involved. And once you do that, you, you do that by talking to humans, right? So essentially talking to humans is a huge science. And there is a book in the, by the same name. You can probably read up on that. So essentially, how do you actually go out and approach a problem and identify the problem and identify the market, right? So that's where it starts. And then you go on and on. It's not a design thinking session. But then uh, to answer your question specifically, how do you identify the market, right? As you clearly, uh, as we clearly discussed, one, uh, it is the problem you're trying to solve. And the moment you say the problem exists, you can say it only in two ways. One is by experience and assumption, right? Poverty exists is a statement. I want to eradicate poverty is the idea, right? How I will eradicate is the problem, right? Is, is the big issue. Now the question is, where's the market for eradicating poverty? That's what you need to understand. So first and foremost, you need to go and define what do you mean? I'm, I'm taking a very, very random example and trying to bring out a framework to that, uh, right? So please bear with me for a minute because it's a known problem. Poverty exists, we all know. But the point is not whether the problem exists. The point is, is your solution solving the problem, right? So now the question is, how strong is your solution, right? How strong is your solution and where it is applicable? So for that, you need to go and define what do you mean by poverty? People who don't have food, people who don't have shelter, people who don't have clothes, people who don't have water, what is it? Right? That is poverty. Right? I don't know. There are, and the government defines people earning less than 50 rupees a day, BPL, there are some lines like that, below poverty line, above poverty line, and poverty definition in India is different, poverty definition in US is different, right? So $1 a day is, is uh, poverty maybe for India, less than $1 a day, but uh, for US maybe it's $100 a day, you don't know. So you need to be very specific in your definition of the problem. It's not the pen, right? The problem I'm trying to solve is not the pen at all. I, pen is a tool maybe, right? So it really depends. For people, you might be thinking I'm selling uh, a pen. But for me, my definition is that I am trying to make people feel better to go and write an exam. And uh, I think this is a good way of doing it. That could be the strategy, right? That could be the solution. So you please understand the two, two contexts here, right? The problem I'm trying to solve could be, I'm not saying is, is, that is the one, could be that I am trying to make people feel better before they enter the examination hall. And can I make money out of that? That's the question, right? So I, I decided on a pen which says good luck written on that. And then, you know, uh, a pen from Krishna, a pen, pen from Mecca Medina, a pen from, um, uh, you know, from... Uh, the Vatican City, I don't know. I'm just saying, right? So you can communalize your problem. You can secularize your problem. Uh, you can uh, you know, make it fanciful, pen signed by Sachin Tendulkar, pen signed by Deepika Padukone, I don't know. Or uh, pen from Italy. You understood what I'm saying, right? So in the end of the day, it's the same thing. Please remember, it's the same thing. But people buy it for different reasons. So you are trying to make people buy so what problem you're trying to solve for them is very important that's why i said the pen i am not trying to sell the pen here please remember i am trying to sell the idea of feeling better before you go into an examination hall the moment i say that i already know where my market is is that right now i know where my market is the definition becomes so important now i don't have to worry about where to sell my pen because you're not even trying to sell the pen. You're already telling where the market is and what you're going to do to your market. My market is people going to exams. They are tensed and I want to make them feel better. What can I do for that? What do I have? I have a pen. Okay, let me use the pen. 
That's one approach. Then it's a more clear definition of the market. Similarly, what is your idea? I mean, let's let's talk about your idea, please, so that you know if, if you're willing to share, uh, maybe I can start building the canvas for you. Right? You said uh, the question was uh, the two things. Right? One is uh, the market. Uh, where is the market? How do you find the market? The other one is the uh, problem that you're trying to solve. Problem exists, but where is the market? That's the question, right? So what is your problem that you're trying to solve? Are you willing to share? You could, you could do that. Yes, sir. Yeah. So uh, on a very basic level, what we, our idea was to create a platform uh, where people, the, 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 there's more transparency and accountability when it comes to donating. So if there's an NGO, we can see all the details and all the legal verifications of the NGO and a display of how they're using the money and to, to see whether the money you've donated is being used appropriately and, you know, to promote, to foster that environment. So that was our idea. And very vaguely, it is people donating. That's the people who we want to reach. But I, I, I think after, like, uh, like you said, it's, the, the idea that we're trying to sell is that you can trust that you can trust people more by donating, and that there's more transparency and accountability. Correct. Correct. So, so, so here uh, you don't have to. So you tell me what will you do? What What is the most important thing for you to do here? The problem that we're trying to solve is that uh, people sometimes they want to donate, but they don't trust the NGO. They don't know it's going to be used. So I think that is where we need to target that that feeling of trust has to be there, which will promote people to donate more. Yes, yes. So so that's where you need to focus, right? So that's where the market begins. It's not about getting money, right? So it's about the journey, right? So uh, you should most importantly focus on that element that is trust right so what you're trying to sell here is trust you're not trying to sell uh, you're not trying to collect donations you're trying to sell the idea of trust correct so this is where you need to see where the market or oh, how do you create a market for trust it's not market for donators is already there you already know that it exists so you have this keto is there and you have so many of these platforms uh, am i right right uh, so there are uh, so many uh, donation uh, platforms and so many things that are already existing in the market so maybe a good point to start with is what they are doing and why people trust them more than you and what is the problem that exists with them that you can add value to I would probably rather start from there than to go out and say, I'll go build a platform and and uh, blah, 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 right? So I think the first and foremost thing is you need to identify the place where this transparency can be demonstrated, correct? So you need to be very clear about the donations that you take. So where you can demonstrate the process of exchange of money to uh, the process of delivery right the where the ngo's money or somebody's money goes in and the problem gets solved so have you identified that what is the problem that you will be demonstrating so here i would focus primarily on not collecting donations but i would primarily focus on that particular segment or that particular line of events that I can showcase. Essentially, you need to create a foolproof process. Do you have something like that? If the answer is no, then you need to go and define that. And that's the prototype that you will go and build first. Then, uh, then automatically uh, you will get users. Right? So you can go and ask people who are donating already and you can go talk to uh, a lot of charities which are successful to get that information like for example there's an akshaya patra right uh, you heard of that uh, it's one of the largest uh, food uh, kitchens in the world i mean like it's probably one of the largest platforms which give uh, free food to people right uh, you know, which is feeding millions of people on a daily basis people still donate money there it's a charitable organization why do people trust it people trust it because there is process People trust it because there is a blah, 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 right? So many things that can happen. Now, can you create a hook to Akshaya Patra and 
then say i'm just taking a random example so pardon me i might be wrong can you emulate a similar structure where they are catering to and the, one of the reasons why people trust it is because they are transparent about their process it's very clear how their kitchens work it's very clear how the delivery model works it's very clear how the volunteers work there it's very clear it's the transparency so you need to find a process like that right and only focus on that i would do that right i will find one place where uh, this whole chain of events can be shown right for example uh, i would say we were talking about exams so that's why i'm saying how do you ensure that school children write uh, their board exams uh, maybe the 10th standard or the 12th standard you as an ngo might just focus i'm just stating an example that i'm going to pick up school children and make them go sit for the exam and pass the exam right so that's an ngo just to do that and this is the cycle time you would need about 18 months to 2 years to show that you pick up 10 students you fund them you tuition them and you take them to the next level and then you get them out and maybe it's accessible to you because uh, you are you are all engineering students and you can train 20 children and for that what is needed is maybe 100 200 rupees uh, a day for setting up a classroom or something like that you need donation for that so so that's the kind of ngos and that's the kind of platforms that you need to get on board first so um, i'm sorry i i, I think i digressed but your market specifically is not the donors please remember that i don't think it's not even close to the donor your market is to have on board your platform trustworthy execution partners or ngos to whom you can give the money to so do you have already somebody like that with you as of now we're trying to interview more uh, charitable organizations and donors to find out exactly how much information they'd be willing to put out for transparency with respect to our platforms so we're doing more research on uh, how much the ngos are willing to collaborate so you can read that okay at least at least you're focusing on the ngos only right you're not focusing on the donors are you no sir right now we're like talking to ngos and trying to figure out to what extent the collaboration right. can happen you are on the right track i think uh, that itself is a very good step that you've taken because you're not trying to get donors uh, without surety of where the money is going to go right it's easy you can take the money and say i will donate it for covid care or pm care or something like that but then that's not going to be the whole process right the the whole issue of pm care also you know it's a very dicey subject that we talk about is is about the transparency right so people are worried about that now they're coming out and saying i'm going to use this much money here and there that's fine but uh, i would say you can work on a much smaller platform so as i said definition so your definition here is trust what what do you mean by trust trust is transparency in transparency of process and impact if you can somehow throw out a metric of transparency of process and impact then maybe some ngos will will be willing to be on board right so that is very very important and i think also the transparency would also mean one more thing uh maybe if i were a donor i would rather say i will go directly give money to akshay patra right why you right so how would you answer that question that would be a very important question to answer because if you on your platform say akshay patra or somebody is a very trustworthy platform then i would just directly go to their link and give money there right until unless you are adding some value in between so it should be some a reach where somebody is not able to go these large organizations are not able to go that's where you can go and then you should also be transparent about your business model right you need to tell why are you doing this is it free of cost or are you using 5% or 2% of that money to run your organization and using the 2% how you are adding 200% value that definition is very important without that this this thing might not work right so just identify that one and then again the causes right the causes can be two ways right one is the ngo which is a more b2b kind of a setup 
or it could be people, right? Somebody comes out and says, I have this problem and I need help. And then you put their story on your platform and then people give money to them, right? So this is also in our model. So both of these have to be prototyped, according to me. Both of these have to be tested and then whatever moves better, you need to then redefine and go there, right? Whether you're doing, again, it's a B2B or a B2C, I don't know yet. B2B, I hope you understood that you're linking a donor to a larger uh, NGO whose line of business is clear and their operation is transparent. That's a B2B, essentially. You're a business platform and they are a business of NGO. I'm, I'm, business is the wrong word, but I'm saying that's what it is. And the donor is just putting money, right? They just put money and they just trickles down here. So donor is outside the purview. The other one is B2C. That is, uh, there is a somebody who has a problem and you you showcase that problem and you as a platform ensure the donor that the entire benefit of this money is going to them. You, you are rest assured. Don't worry, right? So there are two options here. So both of these you will have to explore and then most importantly, you need to build trust with yourself, right? I mean, with your team uh, being trusted by the donors. So for that, for me, the biggest trust is you go out and say, who are the people involved? Why are you doing it? And uh, what are you getting out of it? If you are telling, because I always, if, I have, if I'm putting 100 rupees on a platform, I always think, is the entire 100 rupees going or these people taking 10 rupees out of this? And why are they taking 10 rupees out of this? Until I know that, I will not put the money to you. I would rather go and give it out directly. So that's the risk you run. So that risk you need to eliminate. This is out of my experience, but you need to go out and find out. Right, so we'll work on this on the canvas. We'll put this together maybe tomorrow. Yes. Yes. Yes, people. Uh, any other uh, question? Oh, my God. I mean, yes. Somebody has written privately, privately. There's some too many things that's come. Sorry. Here it is. It is really good listening to these things, but I don't know how I'm going to do all these things in my business. Sir, what is your comment on this? Tell me anything. <laughs> okay, fine. Uh, uh, Bharat, uh, Bharat is asking uh, for inspiration. Uh, I don't know. Just uh, think through. Maybe you will get. I can't. I can't. I can't motivate uh, an entrepreneur because that's the last thing we can do, right? Entrepreneurs should be self. They're they're self firing. Sir, the problem we are trying to solve is communication gap between hearing and speech impaired people who can hear and speak. Since everyone is not aware of the sign language, we are building on a computer vision based avatar, blah, 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 another product is among behind. Okay. So what do you want me to do, Kushal? I don't know. Uh, this is, uh, I have no idea about um, what we can do. But what I can help you with is tomorrow I'm going to give you out a business canvas to you. Uh, and try to break this long paragraph that you have written into different parts of the canvas and then maybe then we can discuss okay this is too long and too oh, you're already telling what you're doing i i don't it really doesn't matter to me i want to know what problem you're trying to solve right between uh gap between hearing and speech impaired people and uh you essentially trying to help hearing speech impaired people i understand that much and then how you're going to do is through computer vision. I understand that also. But then what I want to understand here is have you actually how many, uh, this is another very important point, right? So that's what I was asking the previous uh, speaker also. I don't know who made or who, who, who spoke. Oh, problem is one, idea is one. The end user, empathizing with the end user is very important. How many hearing and speech uh, people uh, who have issues with this impaired people have you have you met have you interacted how many of these schools and speech and hearing schools how many of these speech and hearing ngos have you met with and what is their core issue what is their core problem that is what i want to know only then i can give you solutions because without that uh, this still becomes like solving poverty in the world right so it's very broad based and you've already gone into a solution uh, where you say i'm talking about online meeting and uh, 
uh, you know avatar based gestures and computer vision so this is another trap okay so you are getting into a trap of making it too complicated because you are an engineer because you fancy technology and because ai and computer vision is the buzzword and that's why this right i am being blunt i'm sorry but uh, uh, I, I I have to shake you up this way, otherwise uh, you will not answer your questions in the right manner, right? All of this is relevant if you had spoken to twenty people and they said that this solution, because this is an expensive solution for me. You are talking about speech and hearing impaired people, and they might not have money. Who is going to pay for this, right? It's a computer system, vision based system with some meetings and blah blah blah. Who wants to do a meeting with speech and hearing impaired person on a computer which has this advanced AI technology? Where is the use case? Where is the problem? That's why I always ask, does the problem really exist? Right? The problem exists. Speech and hearing aid people are not able to communicate with normal people. Problem exists. But how many of them want to communicate using an AI-based computer vision technology? I don't know. I don't have a number for that. Until unless you have the number uh, and a target, what are they willing to pay for it? You will not be able to go ahead. Like this is very fanciful solution, right? It's like it's like going telling a poor person that you know you you I'll get you a fork and a spoon and and I will get you uh, caviar and uh, beer or something like that. It doesn't really matter to them, right? So you need to be careful when you're bringing out solutions without much study. This is my observation. I'm sorry if you have done deep research. Uh, I appreciate that. But my observation is that, that you're trying to solve a problem for somebody and the solution is way too unaffordable, inaccessible to them. We need to be very careful. Okay, five more minutes to the eight o'clock cutoff. Uh, here, sir, I wanted to create an online Monday that will facilitate auctioning of produce okay great big basket and all of that great great Tanvesha. oh that could be a great idea so this will be day three right where we will very specifically go into this but i just wanted to understand what you're thinking and use these as a, as a solution so for all three of you who spoke up on your projects i want you to now go and focus where the problem really exists right so uh, and uh, what is the size of that particular market? Uh, only then we can produce. So for that, um, I will very quickly give you a, this is about setting up the company and what it is and all of that, that will go maybe tomorrow day after sometime we'll talk. These are technical things, funding and all of that, let's not go into that. So for business model generation, This is something that I want you to look at for tomorrow very quickly because I am taking out the suspense from the session because actually uh, this is the canvas that we will try to fill out after tomorrow. But then uh, uh, before we go there as an assignment for you, I would like you to this. So here I'm already assuming that uh, you are starting up, okay? If you're not starting up or if you're not willing to set up a company or something like that, which is still okay, this can be applied for so many things, even your college project, you can apply this. So I am calling them customers at this point from that standpoint. You can also say end user if you wish to, but uh, take a screenshot of this or take a photograph of this or whatever, right? Uh, or I will probably put it on the group, maybe uh, if if Sahan is going to create a group, I'm going to do that, right? So I'm going to take a screenshot right now, paste it later. Customer segments, for whom are we creating value? Who are our most important customers? So what, how we can rephrase this is, does the problem really exist? And who are the primary people who are going to benefit from this problem, right? Uh, from this solution, right? Then the next question that you start asking is, 
are there segments in this like i mentioned right people we talked about poverty or we talked about the ngo platform or we talked about the uh, hearing and speech aid person uh, or we also spoke about anvesha who spoke speaks about the online mandi to facilitate auctioning of produce so auctioning of produce for instance a couple of my friends are into auctioning so one of them do beetle nuts and somebody else does cardamom uh, auctioning so they also auction for uh, tons of uh, these things at the same time there are small time farmers there are small time traders who also auction so there are two different customer segments for you similarly the ngo we spoke about there is a ngo whom you are trying to help because you believe they are transparent or there is a person who is going through a problem and you want to get them money that's also there and so on and so forth all of these are different segments and their needs are distinctly different they are uh, different ways you can reach them different types of relationships are needed that is how do you reach out to them what is the platform like he was talking about some ai based computer vision solution then the customer segment is very small scale maybe they are rich uh, hearing and speech uh, impaired people so you should be very clear you have sustainability different profitabilities right so that's something that you need to think are they willing to pay for different aspects of the offer what are you trying to offer right so all of these things you just write down and if you have some clarity just put one one line on these things and you can uh, fill out on the canvas tomorrow right so with this uh, my time is almost up uh, so as a recap quickly for me it's about clarity of why you're doing this give yourself a window of a certain time frame and be clear what is your low risk or a no go point and try to be above that and be very clear on pivots if you're trying to hit that point what else will you do rather than blindly pushing then then only you will be very free to focus on the next step right so that's that's all i would like to say then uh, comes the business model canvas so with this uh, there it is so there's some chat window something is being shared my aim is to become a successful businessman from a long time okay great so we will hopefully to see you there mm -hmm. i want to convert my passion into business okay sure um that's that's your choice right so i can't really I, i'll be more than happy to to see that great so people uh, with this um uh, i'd like to end my monologue more or less but i am available for maybe a couple of more minutes for a q and a tomorrow is going to be this right a more specific focus on this canvas where we break it down so today spend some time get yourself the window of 3 years and then tell talk to yourself and say okay this is what i'm going to do right and please remember be be honest if you think you want to do ms at the same time run a company fine no problem but it comes with its own risk and reward you're taking lesser risk so the reward is lesser at the same time it's a calculated risk it's a focused risk so which is good but then you should be very clear why you're doing it that way right so your aspiration is to do ms at the same time play around with this you need to be clear about that whatever it is just mention that to yourself i don't want to know about it that is left to you or uh, it's absolutely personal based on that you strategize otherwise it will be fanciful it will not go anywhere it will not be able to add. even if it's a college project even if it is simple cisco uh, project for just presenting or for the sake of uh, doing something even then even then time is time right so you need to be clear why you're doing it and if you if you can approach that way it's it's way better right okay people uh, with that uh, any questions maybe i can take a couple because uh, we started about 10 minutes late so i can give you that opportunity to to 
to speak up now. Otherwise, uh, I'll be joining the WhatsApp group anyway, and I'll be putting up the uh, what is it called? The forum. Um, sorry, the the essay question every entrepreneur must ask on that a PDF file. If you get time, it'll take about it's a 15 20 minute read, but it's actually a book which I keep referring essay I keep referring to even today. So I would like you to do that and uh, we'll take it from there. Any questions, people? Hopefully it was uh, worthwhile. Yes, no, maybe. I think it was definitely worthwhile. Sir. Great. Thank you so much. Um, so there it is. Uh, Somebody is asking me, what do you suggest should be the lowest point in risk taking? You know, I am, uh, for me, if you ask me, if I don't die, I'm, I'm happy, right? So it really depends on you, right? If I don't die tomorrow, I'm good, right? So I'm willing to go to that extent if needed, but uh, it's, it's a stupid answer. It really depends on your it's your risk, right? It's not my risk. I can't sit here and tell you what you should be doing or what you need. It's absolutely arrogant of me to even comment there because I can't. I don't know what you're going through, where you are. Maybe you already have a million dollars with you or maybe you don't have anything. So I don't know what, what you mean by risk. First of all, I don't even know what is risk for you, right? So, so please, uh, that one answer, you should be able to do it yourself. If I tell you something, uh, it will be it will be futile actually because you might listen to me and say yes yes okay okay but then you will not be convinced and you that that is the big issue right then you will become the big issue for yourself because you don't know what you want or you don't know what you don't want so both are a problem right so what i mean by what you don't want is if if you don't want to fail your final exams then you should be clear that you need to put some time for studies and ensure that you pass, right? Because you're doing your business and entrepreneurship and then you flunk and then everything flops. That is also a risk, right? So you need to be clear. I don't want to fail or I want to get first class. I want to get first rank and I want to do business. Maybe that's a long shot, right? You, you might be a superhuman and you might, be pull, you might pull off that also. I don't know. But that really depends on you. And risk is not only about money. Risk is about so many things. Like I mentioned, you know, I want to get first class or I want to get 80% in my final exams is, is a considerable investment in time for you. So that is the risk you have to invest there. That means your business will suffer and you should be willing to do that. Right. So, and at the same time, you put all your money and time in business and then you fail your exams. Maybe that's the biggest risk because your parents will kick you and say, stop your business. Right. So you don't want that risk on the business or on yourself. So you need to be clear about these simple things right because these simple things form problems or you have a partner in business uh, who wants to do ms in the next one year and is very clear so you already be prepared for that right you tell them that boss you're going so this is what it is this is what we will do get that out of the way if you don't get it out of the way that it's going to come back and bite you real bad right so focus on that Recommend any book? Yes, I say, I think I already did. Uh, Harvard Business Review for Entrepreneurship. Where was that? And in that, the first essay, which I'll share with you today. Let it go. This one. Read reference, Harvard Business Review Entrepreneurship. Question every entrepreneur must ask is the first chapter. Just read that much. I'm going to put that up immediately in the WhatsApp group. Spend some quality time reading that. Put yourself in the shoes and be honest. Then that will answer half your question. Sir, I just got disconnected few minutes ago. So can you tell how you told to connect means what all you are talking about WhatsApp group? I, have, I was disconnected at that time. You know, all I wanted to tell you was that uh, be clear on what risk you are willing to take over the next two to three years. 
and uh, what you're okay with and what you're not okay with. Only after that, start making your plans. That's all I said. So you were talking about WhatsApp group, sir. WhatsApp group, that. WhatsApp group is in the chat, right? So, uh, Sahan, uh, I'll, I think, uh, join this group, right? Sahan has already shared it, that's all. It's just a group, yeah, I mean, like, uh, uh, where you can just chat up, that's all. Until this workshop is there, that group will be there, and I don't know, yeah. Cool. Anything else, people? I think I'm, I'm uh, I think we are now overshooting on time. I don't want to hold you back on a weekend. <laughs> Right, party time. Right, as long as there's no lockdown. Cool. Um, okay. Does anybody have any questions? To okay, if not, um, remember to join the WhatsApp group uh, through the link. Uh, thank you, sir, for this session. I think we all appreciated how honest you were with it. You weren't sugarcoating it at all. You were. Uh, stating the facts as it was, and I honestly appreciate that. Uh, yeah. uh, and uh, remember to join the WhatsApp group and join tomorrow's session. The links will be sent on that group. And uh, yeah, uh, hope you guys all enjoyed. Thank you, Sandraj, sir, and thank you, Cisco and uh, NASCOM for making all of this work. Wonderful, wonderful. See you tomorrow at 6 10. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you. So, see, uh, see you tomorrow. Great. Thank you, sir.